Look at that black bird. Okay, recording. Well, this video uh, has been a long pending one. Again, a lot of requests on uh, my suspension setup. Uh, yes, you guys know that I run... Uh, well, if you don't know, if you're new to the channel, then this is a custom-built Royal Enfield Himalayan 411, the OG. This has got nothing to do with the stock Himalayan. This is extremely, extremely purpose-built. Very, very capable of taking on uh, uh, just about anything and everything you can throw at it. Really, really capable machine. I'm going to be swapping out the tires to uh, the uh, motocross ones back again. It's because uh, I am more comfortable with the motocross tires off-road than with these fellas. These fellas are great. Don't get me wrong. These fellas are great. They're like the best dual-purpose tires out there in the market. The best dual-purpose tires. But I'm switching to uh, motocross tires very soon. Now, coming to the point. Uh, what I run is custom suspension. And what custom suspension does is, in simple layman terms, makes this bike feel like the new Himalayan 450. Uh, that is what uh, I can say at uh, the least. What I run to start with is the dampening rods, the dampening rods, the uh, rebound hole uh, welded and uh, uh, finished, uh, the um, main holes uh, for compression uh, are I believe two holes so I've kind of made another four holes so there's a total of six holes and each hole has been drilled out to be eight millimeters so, so now they are much much bigger so they completely bypass uh, the oil doesn't really um, have any uh, difficulty going through the dampening rod what you have on top sitting on top of the dampening rod is a, a valve emulator that emulates the uh, uh, upside down folks so the upside down folks uh, the way they work uh, is very different from the conventional dampening style rod folks and when you uh, when you um, uh, introduce this new valve emulator it's a device that's been going around for ages now for all kinds of old school dampening rod folks and uh, so if you were to introduce that into your dampening rod folk then your fork starts behaving like something like the new um, upside down folks now there's a lot more to it it's not just that uh, uh, install the uh, valve emulator and your bike starts now behaving like uh, the new modern day machines no it doesn't there's a lot more of adjusting and fine tuning remember suspension is highly subjective uh, to the kind of riding that you do to the terrain that you ride in on now so the valve emulator and then we have straight rate springs straight rate springs is in simple uh, layman terms is a lot more predictability a lot more uh, a lot more user control than uh, the spring feeling like having a brain of its own yes progressive springs mm, in many cases have replaced the conventional straight rate springs and then again we also have straight rate springs in all kinds of enduro motocross uh, machines so um, there's always been a battle between which is better to each his own but uh, initially when I introduced just the springs, I too felt the progressive springs were much better in terms of taking hits and taking large hits and also taking these small hits. But now that I have run with the uh, straight rate spring, I understand the advantage of it. I understand how predictable that is. All I need to do is just dial it in. The spring rate is heavier than the stock spring. Uh, I don't really know to what weight, but it's, uh, it's definitely wider than the stock, stock spring. The spring inside the fork is wider than the stock spring. I've made videos on all these subjects for you guys to go check out. Uh, on the, uh, in the mods playlist, you will find all these videos. And uh, so, you know, you can reference that before you uh, try and understand what I'm talking about here. The straight rate springs are so much more predictability, so much more understanding for the rider than feeling like the folks have a mind of their own. So the straight rate springs and... Uh, and then there's an oil the oil is maxima mineral 15 weight almost uh, triple the weight of the stock fork oil the stock fork oil was five weight on this machine i believe they increased the weight of the fork oil on the newer machines the 20 uh, 21 22 himalayans 
came with a heavier fork oil but guessing or a heavier uh, spring but for this machine it was 5 weight oil and the front was as plush as it could get so a 15 weight oil straight rate springs and then a preload adjuster this kind of uh, uh, rises the front end and you're sitting a little higher up and you know you have that confidence when you're sitting higher up to to take on these rocks and these jumps and uh, not be affected by it so uh, the tweaks that I've made uh, on the valve emulator on the valve emulator it's, it's at about three uh, and a half turns three and a half turns on the valve emulator this is weight subjective uh, so I am at a 70 kilos and I do a certain kind of riding not just weight also your kind of riding so for the kind of riding that I do uh, it's at three and a half turns and then we have uh, this fella this fella is three turns three uh, turns sticking out I don't know how many turns I've gone in I believe about four turns that I've gone in three turns sticking out nice oil 15 weight so that's your setup for you that's the front folks the rear shock is a custom unit again built specifically for the Himalayan for the 195 196 kilos that the Himalayan is and this shock is from YSS a complete custom uh, kit and is also slightly heavy on the spring I believe it's again weighted for uh, a slightly heavier rider I'm guessing a hundred kilos uh, because the way it comes from the factory at the stock setting itself uh, it feels a lot more firmer than the factory Himalayan so that being said uh, a custom shock now the settings of the custom shock is simple all that you can do is you can do the preload adjustment and play with your rebound clip rebound dampening so I'll talk about the, com uh, the compression uh, this is at about 30% sag and the front is at 25% uh, sag I forgot to mention that this is 25% somewhere around 23-25% sag and this is somewhere around 28-30% sag yes I'm supposed to be at 30 plus percent sag but I'm, I, I, I have spent uh, almost a year tweaking these to get to where I want it so this is at about 28-30% sag and the rebound clicker is at 7 clicks this does 30 clicks I'm at 7 clicks uh, to make it more towards the hard side so from the soft towards the hard it's about seven clicks I can go until nine clicks so uh, that's where I call it uh, quits I don't I don't go hard Mo more than that the sag is at 30 percent and that's all you can do to this this particular uh, unit shock unit is a lot lot more stronger than the factory shock unit that much I can say uh, because you know the way it sits the way you the, the way it comes from the factory the moment you sit on the bike you understand that now you're sitting on a bike which is a lot more a uh, lot more serious about the rear end and uh, how this helps is this just the setup just tightens up the motorcycle the motorcycle feels like one unit the Himalayan has the habit of feeling uh, front and rear as separate units when you ride the bike and you take on jumps and you take on hits you almost always feel like the front has a mind of its own the rear follows and uh, sometimes the rear just kicks and uh, you feel like you know the rear has a mind of its own whereas the front is doing a good job it's because it's unpredictable now when you dial the suspension in both the front and the rear what you achieve is a lot more predictable motorcycle more like a bicycle on the lines of a bicycle yeah so that's the whole of it the front and the rear suspension clubbed with paired with aluminium rims man you couldn't ask for more uh, <laughs> for the fellows who don't know what aluminium rims can do uh, they just turn your uh, entire riding experience upside down with your himis you have to learn how to ride the bike all over again that's how much of a difference they bring to this machine yep so uh, that was the whole of it the suspension part of it this these are my settings one more time 25% sag 30% sag and the clicker at 7 here the uh, valve emulator at 3.5 turns the preload adjuster at 3 turns out and oil 15 weight if this helps it helps I shall get back going <laughs>